Hello, sports fans, and welcome. Welcome to episode 210210 of the Guru Talk of Sports podcast. I am your host, the Guru of Sports. Well, what can you say about this week in sports? This week was like, <laughs> I can't even explain it. It was totally wild. I mean, it was to the point where you didn't know what was happening. From the beginning of the week, around Wednesday or so, when they were talking about the, uh, you know, NFL free agency and the legal tampering period, which is, you know, a bunch of bull crap because basically it is tampering. They should just not say tampering. They should just say free agency. You know, it doesn't matter because... All some of the big names or most of the big names have already been signed. And, you know, we got Derrick Henry going to Baltimore. We got, you know, Calvin Ridley leaving the Jaguars, going to Tennessee, a division rival. We got Saquon going from the Giants to Philadelphia, another, you know, divisional rival. And, you know, there's been a lot of controversy behind that. I'll talk about that in a little bit. But let's take a look at some of the other stuff that's been going on. Um, Justin Fields finally got traded to the Pittsburgh Steelers for a a six-round draft pick. I'm not sure what the compensation was, but all the compensation, what it was, basically. But we'll look at it this way. He's going to back up Russell Wilson, who signed with the Steelers, like I mentioned before. Last week. So, you got Ridley, Henry, Saquon, uh, Cousins. He went to Atlanta. And, you know, there's other big moves or some somewhat bigger moves or whatever. But the thing about it is that this. It's like this. Saquon Barkley left the Giants because the Giants basically got, you know, was tired of him and wanted to part ways with him. So what happened was that, hey, look, he took the money and he went to another, you know, another team. And it was, you know, no question that he took the money and went to Philadelphia because Philadelphia gave up on uh, their running back, Swift, and he went somewhere else. You know, Devin Singletary went somewhere else. You know, there's all the, all the running backs have basically, you know, been switching around. Uh, you got Aaron or uh, Aaron Jones. Sorry about that. Aaron Jones went to Minnesota, another divisional rival. You know, and you got uh, Austin Eckler. He's going to be in Washington. You know, the Colts. Uh, Got rid of Zach Moss, and Zach Moss is going to, uh, what, uh, I think it was, what, Cincinnati. So, I mean, you know, there's, you know, the Bears been basically doing what they've been doing is making their team a lot better. They got, uh, Keenan Allen out of Los Angeles, out of the Chargers. So, you know, it's been a lot of movement in the NFL. This is probably one of the biggest, you know, free agency movement I've seen in a long time. But who, you know, who am I to say? You know, and my man Josh Jacobs, who I think I'm going to keep in fantasy, he went from Oakland to Green Bay. So, it's a lot of movement. So, what can you say? This is free agency. This is what we want to see. You know, the NFL, I, I, you know, I wasn't coming in here today talking about the NFL. But, you know, I had to because of the trade for uh, Justin Fields. And everybody was thinking, you know, what was he going to do? Was he going to stay in Chicago? What they, was that Chicago was going to give up the pick and then they moved down or whatever. But most of the questions have been answered. Chicago is trading Justin Fields to the Steelers, meaning that, they're going to go ahead and get Williams from uh, USC. You know, I'm not really sold on this cat. But the thing is that Chicago feels as though that they can do with, you know, they can pick this guy. 
They say he's a generational quarterback. I really, I don't know. I've seen a couple of his games. He didn't look too good when I've seen him. You know, USC wasn't the greatest team in the, in the, in, you know, in the, you know, in football, college football this year. But, you know, look at it this way. J.J. McCartney, you know, McCarthy, he might be, you know, a top pick. The Giants are basically looking at him a little bit. So you never know. Never know what's going to go on. A lot of stuff is going on in the NFL. All right, another thing I had to mention, and I don't want to do this because, like I told you before, sports and politics doesn't mix. But this week it did because guess what? Aaron Rodgers announced, you know, that he might be the running mate for Robert Kennedy Jr. Now, I know, Robert Kennedy Jr., who is that guy? Well, his father was the attorney general under his uh, brother, John Kennedy. And John Kennedy, you know, was the uh, president right around the time I was born. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I know. That's a long, long time. But Robert Kennedy served as the uh, attorney general for a while. And he did run for president when he was uh, fatally shot in Los Angeles when he was, you know, making his campaign, uh, you know, run. You know, and I hate to talk about politics because politics is not my thing. And like I told you before, I don't do politics on this stuff, on this podcast. But the, this time, you know, this week, it basically came through and, you know, the two met in the middle. And basically now, if Rogers do accept this appointment, what will he be? Will he be the quarterback of the New York Jets? Or he will be the running mate running around the country with Robert Kennedy trying to bring, you know, the independent vote to him, you know? You know, I don't know. I look at it this way. I'm tired of politics, period. Especially with me. Because guess what? My birthday is on election day. And how do you think I feel as though when I found out that my birthday this year, 2024, will be on one of the biggest election days in our country's history? How do you think I feel? Well, very, very pissed off. Because everybody else in this world is going to have a normal birthday. You know, it might be 4th of July. It might be Christmas. It might be, you know, Thanksgiving or whatever. I'm going to have the birthday of Election Day. And believe me, I'm not going to be celebrating that day. Because I don't like politics. I hate politics. You know, I have to sit up here and deal with politics all the time in this house. And like I said, I just don't want to deal with it. That's not my thing. Anyway. Well, this, I'm going to, you know, move on from that political mess. Anyway, I was basically, uh, you know, after I got off work on Friday, basically glued to the television until I had to go out on Saturday afternoon a little bit. And I got back right back home. And guess what? I turned on the television and I watched mostly all the big uh, championship games and, you know, everything in college basketball. Congratulations to Long Beach State. They haven't been to the big dance since 2012, and they're going. And you know what? They look pretty good, pretty decent. And their coach, uh, Dan Munson, he's actually uh, got fired basically, or parted ways with the, with their uh, program. But he's going to take their team to the uh, dance, big dance. 
So, I mean, it's kind of weird that, you know, he is basically going to coach knowing that his last game is going to be in the NCAA tournament. You know. It's funny because, like, I was watching these games and um, I did get a chance to watch a little bit of Purdue. I did get a chance to see North Carolina. I did get a chance to see UConn and the other one, Houston. Out of those four teams, three of them lost. But those four teams will probably be your number one seeds going into tomorrow's uh, action. Now, Houston was the number one team overall in the in the rankings. But they got knocked off by Iowa State. Now, Iowa State is really, really good, and I watched this team, and I liked them. Matter of fact, I had to go. Uh, well, I did this a couple weeks ago. I put some money on Iowa State to, you know, make it to the Final Four or so. Now, I'm not going to tell you my Final Four teams, but I like four teams that I think can get to the Final Four if they're not matched up in the same regions or so. Now, the four teams I do like, I like UConn because they're tough and they, they you know, the defending champs got to give them, you know, their credit because believe me, I think that they're going to make it back again. I like Iowa State because, like I said, I've seen what they did to Houston. And I, like I said, I've watched them a couple different times this year. And they look pretty, pretty amazing to me. I like Auburn. And they're going to be playing for the uh, SEC Championship later on today. Well, it's after 12 o'clock. It's basically about like 1 o'clock in the morning right now. I'm sitting up here talking to you. Um, they will be in the SEC Championship going up against Florida. Auburn and Florida will be settled tomorrow or later on today. And like I said, I really like Auburn. Illinois is another team. Illinois is going into championship. And that the Big Ten championship will be settled tomorrow as well. So, I like Illinois and the last team, let me see, I got four teams. Uh, UConn, Iowa State, Illinois, and Auburn. And like I said, those four teams I already put money on. And hopefully if they don't match up in the same regions or so, I think that might be my final four. But anything can happen. Like I said, some of the teams that didn't, you know, are not in the championship games. I saw Marquette. I even watched uh, a little bit of the uh, Delaware State and uh, Howard game. And Howard's going to the big dance. The Stetson Hatters. Hey, right? first time they ever been in the tournament. You know, it's going to be a pretty good tournament. Uh, you never know what's going to happen. You know, everybody thinks that if you go chalk, all four of the number one seeds will get there. But I don't think so. There's going to be some wild, wild, crazy basketball games coming up at the end of the week. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Those are the you know the you know the real four teams. But you know that Tuesday and Wednesday or so in Dayton or whatever, there's going to be four teams. You know, four teams trying to get in to make up the sixty-eight teams, which I think is too many. They should have just stuck to the final. You know, sixty-four. And you know they're talking about making this thing bigger. You know, not like the uh, college football playoff where they're already talking about having a 12 team. But two years from about a year and a half from now, guess what? They're going to go to 14 teams. You know, don't be surprised if you see, you know, a 32 team playoff. 
in college football because believe me, I don't think college football is really, really messed up. It's really screwed up. They don't know what they're doing. Believe me. But anyway, going back to college basketball, Oregon won the final Pac-12 uh, conference championship. And Oregon is, you know, they're pretty good, sneaky good. You know, they beat Arizona, which I think should have been a one seed, but now I think they'll probably end up being a two seed in the tournament. Not bad. I mean, they, Oregon doesn't look too bad. The other two seed that I think that would make some noise will be Tennessee. Tennessee out of the uh, SEC is really, really good. Marquette will be there as a number two seed. I can't think of which one is the number, the fourth two seeder. But like I said, whatever they put up there on those first two lines, the one seeds, the two seeds, even the three seeds are going to be really, really good this year. And like I said, don't go chalk. I mean, if you want to win some money, put a little money down on it or whatever, I wouldn't go chalk because, believe me, there are some teams in this field that could make it all the way, you know. And also, I forgot to tell you that the uh, Ivy League will wrap up their championship. Princeton and Yale. Uh, and I'm rooting for Yale. I've watched Yale uh, a little bit this year, too. You know, I, I don't understand this, but, you know, I work. I work a lot, you know, 50, 60 hours a week. But I still get a chance to watch all the stuff that I need to. Because what I usually do is like, hey, look, if I'm on the road, you know, I stop, rest, whatever, you know, break out the uh, phone here and, you know, watch some little bit of, uh, you know, my shows or basketball or something like that. I definitely have to do it because, believe me, I got to keep up on the sports thing because that's the only thing that, uh, you know, in March right now, college basketball is the only thing that really matters. You know, like I said, yeah, I mentioned that stuff in the NFL and, you know, in Major League Baseball too. But believe me, when I think of March, I always think of March Madness and the brackets are coming out. You know, I'm going to fill out a couple brackets or so. I hope you fill out a couple brackets as well. But anyway, like I said, this is going to be a very, very good and very exciting uh, NCAA tournament this year, men's basketball. I haven't forgotten about the ladies, but like I said, you know, Stanford, South Carolina, LSU, and Iowa should be your, you know, top four teams. I really think that Iowa has the firepower because, you know, Kalen Clark, and we've seen how, you know, how they play all year long. They should be able to make it through. Now, like I was telling you before, I think it was last week, I still like this uh, young lady, Cameron Brake. You know, I think she's for Stanford. She's really good, really good, and probably one of the best defensive players I've seen in the league in the uh, women's game. You know, Juju, uh, Juju Watkins, another one. You know, I mentioned this before, but like I said, these young ladies are really, really good. And believe me, if you haven't watched any uh, women's college basketball, I think it's a good time to start right now when it's the tournament. But believe me, I've watched so much women's basketball this year. It's unreal. Believe me, it's unreal. But the quality of the games... You know, we can't, def you know, can't mark out the, uh, or rule out the, uh, defending champs. LSU is going to be there. There's going to be a lot of teams there. A lot of teams that could win this whole thing in the women's and in the men's. You never know. 
That's why it's called March Madness. And I'm like really, really glad that, you know, it's here. It's finally here. Like I said, a little bit later on today, we'll find out the brackets, find out where we're match, who's matched up with who. And you know there's going to be some snubs. But right now, I think of only a couple teams like Seton Hall, St. John's, Pitt. Those teams, I don't think, are going to make it. They're not going to make it. And also... One of the teams that I really, really like this year and enjoy watching, Indiana State. They might not make it. I really thought that they had a chance. I think they were the one seed in their conference. They lost their conference title. But I got a feeling that they might just, you know, put them in as well. But it's going to be hard because a lot of these at-large bids are going to go Bye-bye because of some of these teams that win. Now, let's say like if Florida beats Auburn in the SEC championship, Florida gets in, that means that's going to knock out somebody there. You know, Yale or Princeton is going to go. And you know they only get like one team in. Like I told you last week, there's some... There's a conference that's going to get like nine teams in. And they're going to be really, really stacked. The SEC play had a lot of great teams this year. Don't be surprised if they get seven or nine teams in. I said that again from last week. All right. So, we talked about uh, the NFL. We talked about college basketball. Like I said, you know, I'm not a I'm not a big politician politics guy. I am not. But when I heard that story about, you know, Aaron Rodgers, it just tripped me out. It was just so crazy. Now one other thing I do want to top you know, talk on and you know comment on is the uh you know The war between Tiki Barber (coughs) Sorry for the little pause. I had to, you know, cough there and I didn't want to cough into the uh, you know, into the microphone and, you know, be kind of rude or whatever. Like I said, the last thing I want to comment is on Tiki Barber versus Saquon Barkley. When this came down, I heard it, and, you know, Tiki was saying, hey, look, you know, Saquon, you can go to any other team. You can go to Dallas. You can go to Washington. You can go to Houston or wherever, but don't go to Philadelphia. If you go to Philadelphia, you're dead to me. Now, I didn't think that this was a big deal. Until Saquon fired back at Tiki Barber. And he said, who are you to, you know, tell me? You know, you're a hater. You basically don't know. You know, hey, look. I don't think Tiki meant that as a serious thing. It wasn't serious. He's just teasing. He's just teasing. He said, hey, you know what? You go to go to Philadelphia, you're dead to me. But the thing about it is that the whole thing blew up to the point where you had Ryan Clark jumping in. You had Saquon jumping in. And then you had Marcus Stroman had to throw his two cents in there. Come on now. You know, I listen to Tiki Barber a lot. And I can say that this dude is genuine, a nice guy. You know, I don't know Tiki Barber from anybody. You know, I never met the guy before. But, you know, it's, the thing is, I can under, I understand how people are. And I get a f- certain sense of when a person is 
you know, joking around or when somebody's serious. You know, when I was listening to, you know, him on the radio a couple days ago, you know, Monday or so, you know, when it happened, you know, before it happened, it was just a joke. You know, obviously the Giants didn't want to pay Saquon. So he had to go somewhere else to get paid. You know, I don't have any problem with any athlete trying to get as much money as they possibly can. You know? To play the game is a big thing. To be rewarded for what you do when you're playing... That's all it matters. You know? And you got to look at it this way. The man wanted to get paid. Philadelphia wanted this, wanted Saquon, and he took the money. There's nothing wrong with taking the money. There's nothing wrong at all. Because believe me, if I had a, af, any athletic ability, you know, I would have been out there. I would have tried to get as much money as I could. Now, I know a lot of teams, you know, not a lot of players are not going to be with the same team. You know, it's loyalty. There's no, I mean, there's, sports is a business. You got to remember, sports is a business. It's not a game. It's just a business. And when someone's going to offer you a lot more money, hey, they're going to leave. You know, I understand where Tiki was coming from. You know, it was kind of a, you know, yeah, you know, he left. He basically speaks for the fans and you know, there's, you know how New York fans are. They're pretty, you know, they're pretty vocal about everything. Tiki was just joking around. It wasn't no big deal. Saquon got a little, you know, pissed off and he took it the wrong way or whatever. You know, and yeah, he went to a divisional rival. But you know what? That divisional rival paid him. Now, I'm a fan of, you know, I like the I like the Raiders. I like the Jacksonville Jaguars. You know, yeah, I was pissed when Calvin Ridley took the money and went to Tennessee. But you know what? That's on him. He got paid. Who am I to say you can't go because, you know, we, we try to build a team down here. You know, Gabe Davis came in and, you know, signed with the Jaguars. Three years, $39 million. You know, hey, ain't no big deal. I know he didn't go to a divisional rival, but that's the way it is. Sports is a business. And I don't fault any player that's going to get money and try to, you know, ride this thing out and try to get as much money as they can out of it. You know. Sometimes we got to look at our fandom and realize that, hey, this is a business. Saquon is making the business decision to take care of him and his family, you know, generational wealth to take care of his family. Calvin Ridley did the same thing. Derrick Henry did the same thing. Austin Eckler did the same thing. You know, it's all it's all good to me. If a team is going to pay you what you want and your old team ain't, what are you going to do? You're going to leave. But like I said, there's no loyalty in sports anymore. It's not the old days like when I was growing up where you know, hey, I can tell you the lineup for the Baltimore Orioles or the Baltimore Colts and everything. You know, I could tell you those because guess what? Those team, those players and those teams was always there. 
You know, two of my favorite players of all time, Baltimore Colt guys, Lionel Mitchell and Johnny Unitas, you know, left Baltimore and went to San Diego. You know, San Diego when they played for, you know, when they was in San Diego. But you know what? Like I said, it's a business. Yeah, I was a little upset because both of them left. But you know what? That's the way it is. That's the way it goes. You know? And see, the thing is that we can't understand how our fandom takes over the reality of what's going on. You know, fans, you know, fans will get upset when players leave and stuff like that. Shouldn't be. Because you definitely got to remember, like I've been saying, this is a business. It's not, there's no loyalty in sports. Believe me, there's no loyalty in sports. So, what do you, what, you know, what can you say? What can you do? Yeah. Anyway, I want to play this little thing for you before I leave. And, like I said, this is really funny because, uh, you know, like I said, never think about, I never think about politics or so. And like I said, it actually came across this this week. So, in honor of our man, Aaron Rodgers, maybe going on the campaign trail, this is for you. Yes, that is hail to the chief. And believe me, <laughs> this is about the silliest day. I can can you actually believe that he's gonna do this? And my question is, is he gonna be able to do both? Be a quarterback in the NFL and try to campaign as a vice presidential camp? Or uh, vice presidential uh, candidate? I don't know. I I can't. I can't. You know. <laughs> it's. I mean, some of the things. Some of the things in this world are just too crazy for me. And you know, it's just that I. I you know, I. Years older than me. Hold on a sec. All right, get out of there. Anyway, it's just too crazy. But like I said, you know. I, you, you always go through and see some crazy things. But anyway, let me get out of here. I haven't talked enough. I want to tell you guys that, hey, look, I really appreciate you listening. You know, some of these, uh, you know, these podcast episodes are getting shorter. Only because, like, I want to be able to give you a couple different little things. You know, not go around the, you know, round and round and round with different other things, but just to give you a couple things. But like I said, since the uh, March Madness, March tournament, the you know, the tournament's going on, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about this thing and, you know, giving you all the things that I thought I see and see, you know, deal with. Also, I want to tell you guys that uh, I'm going to be uh, talking more with my man, Dave May Jr. We talked a little bit today, and uh, we're going to be doing our baseball thing a little bit later. He's got some really good insights and stuff for me, and I'll definitely pass it on to you. But anyway, this is the Guru signing off for this week. And like I said, I'll be back for episode 211 of the Guru Talking Sports Podcast. And I am the Guru, and I do approve this message. Later.